Hey everyone, this is Steven Strawn at the Cast Iron Connection, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use your cast iron cookware. Today we're going to be talking about a piece that I found today while I was hunting cast iron cookware. It is a number 14 Birmingham Stove and Range Red Mountain Series. Really, really excited about this piece. So we're going to be going from the entire restoration process to a completed, ready-to-use skillet. So, keep watching. Like I said earlier, this Birmingham Stove and Range number 14 Red Mountain Skillet is an awesome find. And I'll just tell you, I was so excited. I'm telling you what, so this is the kind of piece you don't run across every day. Usually if you find one, they want $100 for it. So I got this piece for $25. I'm excited. So we're going to be going through the entire process of restoring this piece. We're going to put it in my uh, light tank first, give it a few days in there, and we're going to take it from there and put it in my electrolysis tank and season it. Get it ready to be used because we're going to use this baby right here. I'm telling you what. So I'm excited about it and just follow me through this process and we'll get this thing looking nice. So let's go. Hey, here we are about ready to put this piece in my light tank. Just want to show you a little bit. My shop, the lighting's not so good. So, so just hang in there with me. But we're going to stick this thing in the light tank and I want to show you my light tank and kind of give you a little information on it before we stick it in. So here we go. Like I said before, this is my light tank. And if you set up a light tank, you want to make sure it has latches. And I have even had one before that didn't have latches. I put concrete blocks on just to make sure critters don't get in it. Or kids, you know, and I got yellow just to remind everybody. Yellow, you just stay away from it. So we're going to take my light tank cover. And I've got it about half full. So here we go. Fixing to take the plunge. Now with lye, you got to be very careful not to let it splash you. So I'm careful when I drop it in. You may want to wear glasses and even gloves. But, you know, I've done this so much that you know, I'm careful. But you personally, if you start something new, use all the safety equipment that you need to to start with until you get, until you get uh, comfortable with it. Okay, we're about to drop this thing. And don't drop it. Usually with a lye tank, you want to be careful. I got some other pieces in there now. We just want to make sure it's covered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it all the way down to the handle and then just, well, I've got another piece in there. So we want to be careful. So we just slowly drop it in. If you have to, we'll go ahead and take a stick and push it on. Push it on under under the water. So don't forget if you got a light tank, make sure it's always covered and secure. Okay, when you're dealing with lye or any other chemical like that, you want to make sure that you're safe. So you may want to wear uh, safety glasses and maybe even rubber gloves. So what I usually like to do is I keep a little bottle of vinegar around because vinegar neutralizes the lye. And we're going to go on this a little more in detail when we take it out of the lye tank. But I got it on the spray, so if you get a little bit on your fingers, just give yourself a little spritz. And if you got a lot on your fingers, give yourself a lot of spritzes. It'll neutralize the lye, then you can just go and wash your hands with soap and water, and you're good. So the next step will be taking it out of the lye tank, neutralizing the lye, and then going into my electrolysis tank. And for my lye tank, I use basically lye. Right here is crystal drain opener. You can get it at Lowe's or Marvin's or probably Walmart or any, any other type of store like that. And it is very dangerous. Whenever you put it in, you make sure you get your water in first and then put your lye in and, you know, kind of don't clump it all in one place. And then if you use a stir stick, don't get it on you. You know, I would just advise you, if you've never used it before, 
to go ahead and, and wear rubber gloves, go ahead and wear safety glasses just to make sure you're safe. Don't do it in a confined space where there's no ventilation. Make sure you're ventilated. But do make sure you have ventilation with your light tank and with your e-tank. Also make sure that you have a lid on your light tank for safety to make sure no small children or critters can get involved in it. And just make sure it's in a place where kids can't get in and mess around and get into it by accident. The last thing that we want to see is someone to be hurt. Remember, vinegar. Keep a bottle of spray vinegar on hand. I use it to spray down like you've seen in my video. I use it to spray down my cast iron when I take it out of the light tank. And it's there safe just in case I get some on my hands or somewhere I don't want it. I can spray it down really good. I remember when I first started, I got a little splash on my, on my cheek. And at first it scared me. But I had a, a tank full of vinegar, so I just took my hand and put it in there and just wiped it on my face. It was dirty, but it neutralized the lie. Then I just went into soap and water and got rid of it. So we want to be safe, number one. Oh yeah, with a crystal drain opener. This is a two pound bottle. I don't know the exact ratio. Basically, I have about 25 gallons in my tank and I use the entire two pounds. So here we go, we're about to remove our Birmingham Stove and Range Red Mountain Series from our light tank. It's been in here for about four days. We want to kind of fish it out. And here we go. We're going to let it drain as much as we can right here till all the excess lye water has drained off. I usually let it hang above my tank a little while till it completely quits dripping because I really don't want it dripping all over the floor and it's not even a bad thing to let it drip dry. So once I know it's quit dripping, Always put your lid back on your light tank. We don't want any critters getting involved in it because that stuff is not good. Like I said before, I got my vinegar spray. I'll spray it down really, really good with vinegar to neutralize the lye. I'll hang it back up and let that kind of sit for a little bit. Let the process go ahead and finish. The next thing I do is I go ahead and put it on my table and just kind of uh, go over it just a little bit, just in case there's any big chunks still hanging on. You see on the tip, it's a little bit more on the uh, It's mostly all, looks like all of this came off, except for just a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and take this and we're gonna put it in our electrolysis tank. This is my current setup with my electrolysis tank. I have a stand-up battery charger and a stainless steel tank. Go ahead, what I do is I'll go ahead and connect my hot lead to my tank. Fortunately, my entire tank is stainless steel, so I didn't have to deal with anodes or anything like that. The whole tank is an anode. And then when I put my cast iron in there, I will connect the black lead to the cast iron. Okay, I just want to talk just a little bit about my electrolysis tank. Here I've got my old box. It's a little dirty, uh, but I use Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda for my electrolyte in my uh, electrolysis tank. Uh, basically, 
You use about a half a cup for five gallons. My skillet is longer than my tank is deep. So I had to go ahead and put these spacers in to keep it from touching bottom. One thing is you don't want it touching the sides or your anodes because it will ground out and it, the process won't work. So just go ahead and connect our charger. Mm -hmm. Let's get her turned on. The lighting is kind of bad in here, but you can see it's starting to bubble. It's not going to take long because it didn't need a lot. Most of the gunk that was left over was on the pepper handle on the end of it, so that'll take care of that. Okay, we're about to remove our skillet from the electrolysis tank. Take a look and see. Get over here on the work table. And it's all, it's come pretty clean. A well, little bit there is on it now will just come off in the dish water. Yep, it's all loose. There we go. Nice. Probably a little bit of elbow grease here and there. We'll finish it right off. There we have it. A little bit dirty, but ready to be seasoned. Cut up a little spots. Need a little bit of elbow grease on. Other than that, we're good. The next thing we're gonna do is wash this piece. You can see it's almost too big for my, my sink. One thing I've learned about cast iron cookware is once you get it stripped down and you wash it really good, if you'll rinse it out with as cold as water as you can get, you'll have less flash rust. I don't really know why. So if you know why, please uh, feel free to share it in the comments. So we're gonna let this drip dry as much as possible and then we're going to stick it in the oven and let it finish drying. Okay, I'm going to be using a new product, a product that I haven't used before. It's called Buzzy Wax Cast Iron Seasoning and Conditioning. I bought it online from buzzywax.com. Okay, this is not a stain. This is where there was still some water in the pan wasn't completely dry when I got out of the oven, so I went ahead and dried it out with a towel and then let it let the heat finish drying it down to the bone. So we're gonna take our buzzy wax. While the cast iron is warm, I heated it up to the lowest temperature my oven would go to, which is 170. I think it's gonna be sufficient for it to for the wax to get hot enough and get down in the pores and just remember that uh, I don't really know if it's the fact that the pores open up on cast iron as it is the oil when it's hot it has more of a tendency to to fit down into smaller little 
crevices in the cast iron surface. You want to use a rag that is non-lint, a lint-free rag. Shop towels do great. Paper towels don't do so well. But we're going to get a good coat on it to start with. And after we get it covered really well, still a little bit on the warm side. Okay, now that we got it covered and it's set for a few minutes and kind of settled in, I'm going to go and wipe off all the excess that we possibly can. We'll stick it in the oven face down. Okay, according to Buzzy Wax, you're supposed to set your oven to 480 to 500 degrees for the duration of one hour. Me personally, I went ahead and went 500 degrees just to make sure I have it hot enough because one of the base oils is going to be grapeseed oil. And I think the smoke point for grapeseed oil is a little bit on the high side. So we're going to let that run for about an hour, cut our oven off, let it cool down, and then re-season our cast iron again, do the same process two more times. So I'm really curious to see how Buzzy Wax does because I've never used Buzzy Wax before. So let's check it out. Okay, our skill is cool enough to handle for a second layer. Looks pretty good. Go ahead and get our second coat on here. Just almost too hot to handle. Even for me. dry off as much as we possibly can with a dry cloth. Thin is better. Stick this back in there. Okay, we're two layers. And I'm really surprised how good it looks for two layers. Still got a little bit of a brown hue to it. It's taking less and less. The further along we get, just about too hot to handle. Stick this back in there for one more, one more round. Okay, at this point, we have three layers and it looks really good. It's still not got a totally even color yet. I think a lot of it was from that water stain that when I didn't have it completely dried. The back looks real good. Still not a black color but it's ready to use that's for three layers me personally i like going ahead and going five layers on all my cast iron pieces just to give it a little something extra so it's ready now ready now to use but i'm gonna go ahead and put two more layers on it we'll take a look at it after we put two more layers on it but this is going to be a beautiful piece. It is beautiful already. But it's going to be even prettier the blacker it gets and the more it gets used. Thought I'd let you see her cousin, the Century Series one. It's shiny. Whoop. This is the cousin. This is the uh, Century Series. Got a funny little casting, you know, surface difference on it there, but you see how much blacker this one is. And this just comes with time of use. So after this in here gets used, so 
after this in here makes a few pizzas and after it gets used for a couple of big batches of biscuits, it'll start looking black like this one here and just be slick. It's already pretty slick, but I believe two cousins right there, Century and Red Mountain. They fill a stove top, don't they? Actually, these kind of skillets you don't really want to use on a stove top because you can't really get an even heat. I suppose you could cut it on low and use both stove eyes and let it heat the pans up slowly before you put it on some heat. And you could probably use these as a griddle. Probably could do a big breakfast. I may try that one of these days and just uh, try that out. Usually you don't use anything bigger than a number eight on a stove top mainly because you're heating it up in a certain area. You're heating it up in a small area in the center and it has a tendency to warp the skillets if you heat them too fast. And that's one thing I don't want to do. Both of these girls here are just as flat as they can be. There's no spin, no wobble. These are just, these are just perfectly flat and I don't want to mess that up. So there you go. Century Series Birmingham Stove and Range, Red Mountain Series Birmingham Stove and Range, two beautiful skillets. Okay, we finally got her finished and it looks really nice. I think the Buzzy Wax done a really good job and it's going to get prettier as time goes by as we cook in it and use it and put more layers of season on it and it just gets darker and darker. So. It's not quite as dark as this. Whoa, this thing is heavy. It's not quite as dark as my Century Series skillet, but it'll get there. <laughs> I'm thankful that I finally am going to be able to add that to my collection. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it to be educational. And if you have, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and I will keep more coming as time goes. Thanks for watching the Cast Iron Connection.